So I was planning on making a video about the at connection directive in Apollo and how to use it with a paginated list. And to do that, I was gonna make a little demo application that has infinite scrolling. So I thought, why not start by doing a video on how to set up infinite scrolling first? So that's what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna show you an example of how to set up infinite scrolling on the front end. So for this, I just have a list of items and a material UI list, and we're gonna go over how we can take this vanilla list and make it so when we scroll to the end of the list, we can continually fetch items. Now I'm gonna assume you have an API, or in this case, I'm gonna be working with GraphQL, so a GraphQL API that has some sort of pagination uh, query. If you don't, I set up a simple glitch API that you can use if you want, uh, so you can just point it at this URL. I think it stays open, it may fall asleep and you have to just come ping it. Uh, but how the API works is I have this books query that has some dummy data in it. Um, and I can fetch the ID, title, and author for a book. And then it tells me whether I have more items uh, or I can fetch more items. So here I requested 10 items, here are the 10 books, and I can request more, more items. And I can page through this using a cursor mechanism. In this case, I'm just using the ID as the cursor. So if I say 10, it's gonna give me the next 10 books after this book right here, uh, and so on and so forth. All right, so that is what we're going to be starting off with. So here is uh, just the starting code that I'm gonna be starting with. Uh, so here I have the use books query. And if we take a look at what this looks like on the front end, it looks like this. So we're gonna be passing in two variables, a cursor and first. So what first is, is like the limit. And we're basically telling it, hey, I would like 50 items, or I want 30 items back, whatever you want. In my case, I'm saying 50. Uh, here's the name of the query. We're just passing in the variables, and then here's what I want back. All right, so I'm calling that query, and I'm saying give me the first 50 items, and I'm not passing in a cursor, so it gives us the first 50. Um, and then you'll notice here I'm checking whether we get uh, no data for the books, so not data or not data.books, and then I say we're loading. Uh, and then this there's just some divs, and then here is the material UI paper and material UI list item. Um, and I'm just rendering the books. So pretty simple. So let's go into how we can actually get this into something that scrolls infinitely. And so the idea is when I scroll at some point, I need to trigger loading more items. So there is multiple ways that you can actually trigger uh, the bottom loading or different libraries you can use. Uh, the one that I've heard good things about is called React Waypoint. So I've already uh, added that to my project. So I'm just going to import it. And so this is what I'm gonna try out uh, in this and see how it goes. So we can import a waypoint uh, component. And so what's going to happen is whenever, I can either wrap this waypoint uh, component, have it like inside of another component like this, waypoint, or sorry, surrounding another component. And then we can say on enter, and you can notice there's a few other props like on leave. And so basically what happens is it tells you whenever this waypoint uh, is visible. Um, and so if we were to just wrap all the items, and I'm gonna get the index here, and we're gonna say I, so here, all I'm doing is whenever we enter a waypoint, I am logging the item. All right, so I can come over here. Uh, we can take a look at this. Oh, I need to add a key to this. And I think it's getting at, mad at me. Uh, oh, maybe I need to be inside. I think it's getting angry because I didn't put it inside and I didn't give it a key. I'm gonna do it like this. So I'm gonna wrap this in a fragment, put the key up here, and I am not going to wrap it. I'm just gonna render a waypoint like that. And I'll give that a save, and give it a save, make sure this formats. All right, so let's see what this waypoint thing does now. Now, you'll notice it has log 17 through 25, and as I'm scrolling, it's telling me basically which items are currently visible to me. As I scroll up, you can see I'm entering other items. So cool, right? 
So what we're going to do is use that to our advantage and we're going to say when we get to a certain point we want you to load more data. So in our case we can say something like when we get to the end of the list or maybe some threshold like when we get 10 items uh, close to the bottom of the list then load more. So I'm going to say i is equal to data.books.books.length minus 10. And so I'm only going to render a waypoint on the uh, item that's the 10th away from the end. So what that means is we're only going to call this once when we get to the end of the list here, right? So next up is instead of just logging this is to actually have it fetch data. So we can have access to that by using the, oops, not there, here, refetch, not refetch, fetch more. The fetch more function that we get from uh, Apollo. So we're just going to pass that in here or call it here on our waypoint. And for fetch more, we're gonna have to pass in new variables. In this case, I'm gonna keep the first 50. In this case, just give me 50 more items. And then I have to pass in the cursor. And the cursor for me is going to be the last book. So if we just get the last uh, item, or last index like that, and get the last book from it, and then we're gonna say dot ID to get the ID of the last item in the list. Uh, we also need to pass in an update. So the update query is for when we actually get data back, how do you merge it into the already existing data? So the first value is the previous results or previous value, and the second is, um, I, I forget actually the name of it, to let TypeScript auto-complete it for me. It's called fetch more results, it looks like. So I'm gonna check whether we get results back. And if we do not, I'm just gonna return what the previous value was. Otherwise, I'm going to say books. And here you need to specify usually the type name. And I'm gonna say books, keep the previous value, pre keep the previous books and add the new books that we just fetched. And then the has next page, fetch more result dot books dot has next page. So basically what this is doing is we are making another network request to get more data and we are saying how do we update the data that we currently have in the cache for this query or the data that we initially fetched, how do we merge them into a single array? So in our case, we merge the two arrays like that, and then we just take what, whether there's a next page from uh, the most recent query. All right, so let's see this in action now. So if we scroll, you'll notice the scroll bar here, and as we approach the end of the list that we just never approach the end of the list now. So we can just pretty much scroll forever. You see me scroll through a ton of stuff. I think I put like 1K items in this, so we can scroll for quite a bit of time. Um, but that gives you an idea as we scroll, that waypoint is getting triggered uh, and it's loading more data over and over. Uh, so that is the basic algorithm for doing this and that's how you would do it with say a waypoint. Uh, there's one other thing that I wanted to go over and that's you may want to add, for example, a loading indicator or something. So how do you go about adding a loading indicator? So there is this thing that we have access to through Apollo called the network status that's gonna allow us to do that. So we're gonna just console log that. So this will give us an idea how that works. So you'll notice the value is seven. Uh, I think in the Apollo docs, it specifies what all these number values mean um, somewhere. I should have pulled that up, but oh well. But uh, as you'll notice, as I'm scrolling, it just says seven the entire time. Uh, and basically this number is gonna tell us whenever we're fetching more items, that way we can show a loading indicator. Right now it's not doing that, right? Because it's always showing seven, so we don't know when we're loading items. But when we call the use books query, we can say notify on network status change, set that to true, uh, and then it's gonna tell us when we are refetching or fetching more. So as we scroll, you'll notice how it's three for just a small second. That is when it is fetching more data. 
Um, and we can just see that. You notice it's going to go through that pattern where it says 377 over and over. So we can use that to our advantage. And at the bottom here, I can say network status is equal to 3. Then I would like to render a circle progress bar or just a circle progress theme bobber. And if I scroll down to the bottom right away, you can see it for like a millisecond um, before it just it loads the data because it loads it pretty fast. Anyway, that gives you an idea of how you can do that. So utilizing the network status to figure out uh, when we are fetching more data. Because basically when this gets triggered, this becomes three and this gets loaded conditionally. And we only want to show this when the network status is three. We don't really want to show it at the beginning. Though you could, instead of showing like loading here, we could do a circle of progress as well here if we want to. Could be a little bit better. Or, you know, I guess it's over there. Anyway, that is how you can do a pagination with Apollo. Again, the basic idea is you need to know when you hit the bottom of a list. In our case, we use the waypoint to figure this out. We said when we're 10 away from the bottom, place a waypoint, and when that's visible, uh, fetch more. But you could use other libraries as well to get that same effect. And you could also play with this threshold to say, I want to do it while I'm 20 items away or 30 items or closer to the bottom you get to pick. Um, and then lastly, just for this fetch more, you're basically just uh, using either a offset or cursor to get data from the API, uh, another page of it, and then you just merge it into the initial data. Tomorrow I'm going to be going over how we can actually update the cache uh, when we have a paginated list like this because it's kind of a nightmare when you need to say delete an item uh, from this list. Well, it's not exactly a nightmare, but it's not exactly simple either. Uh, there's not a simple way to delete an item from this list or say add an item to this list, but uh, we'll go over that in tomorrow's video.